the uh, simple theory for the threshold voltage of the MOS the transistors. And then uh, in that uh, calculation, the threshold voltage, is, this is the equation for the threshold voltage of MOS transistor. And as you can see, in this equation, there is no geometric factor involved. In other words, if you make uh, changes in uh, L here, the gate length, or the d W, the width of the transistors, it should not affect on the threshold voltage according to this equation. But in reality, if you changed uh, the geometry, then uh, the threshold voltage is going to change. And the result is this is one example, the threshold voltage, and this is the uh, gate length. Uh, the, I think this is the width of, uh, channel length. Okay, so this is the reciprocal of channel length. So. This is a uh, small channel length, and as you increase the uh, channel length, the threshold voltage is going to change uh, something like this. So we can see that the threshold voltage is going to change uh, with respect to the uh, channel length. And uh, this is the uh, uh, channel length on the top, and on the uh, bottom, th this is the length, and uh, this is the width. And uh, as you can see, the threshold voltage is going to be changed according to the geometry of the transistor. That is a fact. So we got to do something about the classical uh, equations. Here, the threshold voltage. Uh, it doesn't have any terms. It doesn't contain any terms of uh, length and width in uh, this equation. So basically, what we are going to do is we're going to put some W and L in that equation, which can reflect the fact that uh, as we change the a geometry of the transistor, so we're going to have a different uh, threshold voltages. All right, so here, this is just a brief explanation about the threshold voltage determination, which is a, just a review of other class. And uh, let's see. Uh, And uh, you can see at the last part of the review of the threshold voltage, you can see that the transconductance, transconductance as well, has uh, geometric factors in, in here in this uh, uh, transconductance, but it does not really reflect uh, the uh, geometric factor on the transconductance in a sense that it is uh, summarized in this. Uh, in the saturation region, the ID should increase without the limit with the gate voltages in, in this equation, uh, according to the classical equations, okay? And uh, that is not uh, uh, what happens in uh, reality, right? So, uh, to, we are going to, today we are going to discuss about the small geometry MS devices and the what, uh, how we can incorporate the W and L in the threshold voltage equations that we have discussed uh, 
uh, formally. Okay, this is the L, and uh, this is the definition of a W. And then, uh, as we have seen, the threshold voltage is going to change with W and L in this fashion. And how can you explain that? Okay. Uh, Uh, the things that we are going to uh, discuss in this class is exactly modeled with a uh, computer. So, uh, in one uh, point, we don't have to uh, do the analytical uh, formulas on this uh, equations, on this phenomenon, but we try to uh, get a uh, simple analytical formulas on this uh, phenomenon because we want to see the uh, physical insight, what's happening in, in the uh, threshold voltage thing, you know. And then uh, uh, how can you optimize the uh, device to, uh, to prevent the influence of the geometry on the threshold voltages. Obviously, what we want is, as we decrease the size of the transistors, it does affect the threshold voltages, but we do not want that of, uh, influence of the geometries on the threshold voltages. So, we have to think something else to prevent those uh, those influence of the geometry on the threshold voltages. Okay, so uh, that's what we are going to do. Now, if you look uh, carefully, what's happening in the Amherst device? This is the uh, source and drain, and we have a depletion regions because it is a junction. The substrate and the uh, source and drain. Is a diode, basically. So we have a depletion region, something like this, and then we have an inversion layer here. It's another depletion layer between uh, uh, due to the uh, uh, capacitors, right? So we have a WD where the, the uh, depletion from the uh, ca uh, capa capacitors. And then we have a depletion region with the PN junctions here, the source and drains. Now, if this length is very big, the L and L prime is almost the same. The, this is a, a, just a trivial uh, thing, but if it gets smaller and smaller, then there is a significant difference in L and L prime. And then this depletion region is not going to support the charges which is necessary for the, uh, for the uh, inversion to turn on and turn off the transistors, which is related to the threshold voltages. So, if the L and L prime is different, a different, significantly, uh, significantly different than the area which can support the charges to determine the threshold voltage is going to be uh, changed. So actually, there's a trapezoid area is the only area which can support the inversion charges. So this area is going to be decreased by the depletion uh, between this uh, diode, two diodes, source and drain. So in this calculation, what we are going to do is, we assume drain voltage as zero for a moment. Okay, and uh, we set the uh, threshold voltage 
by the definition that the surface charges is just the twice of the uh, bulk charges. Okay, this should be. Okay, we assume that the definition of a threshold voltages, and then uh, for a moment we do not apply any drain voltages. In other words, the depletion here in this side and in this side is the same. Okay, we do not apply any drain voltages. We are going to uh, drain voltage. Uh, take the drain voltage into account later in a minute, but uh, for the time being, we just set drain voltage is zero and we define the threshold voltage when the bulk charges is uh, twice of the uh, uh, surface charges. So, charge, uh, charge conservation. We have this equation and the threshold voltage. It's just the same token that we have this described in the classical theory. And the WD is going to be determined with this equation. This is a classical theory, and we are not going to do anything new on this. But uh, here, the total charge in the triple joint. Okay, now it's going to be this. So this, you know the area, how you determine the, the triple area, okay? And then that is going to support the charges in total. And then we have this equation and then we have the RJ, which is a curvature of the source and drains, okay? The RJ is nothing but, uh, If you say this is a, a, a drain, okay, the RJ is just like this. This is a curvature, all right? Uh, it should go something like this, yeah. the RJ. That is the RJ. So, uh, in order to calculate the area to support the charges, we have to take that thing into account. The RJ has to be in, it should be incorporated in the equation, and we end up with the threshold voltage is now is related to the RJ and L. Okay, and uh, this is the desired result, which can predict the threshold voltage as a function of L, R, J, and uh, W. Right. Now, uh, in this equation, it, it can be predicted that the threshold voltage change is uh, inversely proportional to the gate length. Okay, and then uh, the as Rj decreases, the, the Rj decrease means the sharp, uh, sharp source and drains, the shallow junctions. In other words, okay, the delta R, delta V, the threshold voltage change is going to be decreased, so that if you want to make the transistor small, then you have to have a shallow junctions in order to decrease the Rj, and that uh, decrease of Rj will uh, make the transistor insensitive to the geometry. Okay? This is just that. And for large L, of course, delta V, threshold voltage change is going to be zero, approach to zero. So in the larger devices, the, German, the classical theory, which does not contain any, anything of geometric factors, is going to be uh, effective. It is, it's okay. But when you 
have uh, miniaturized the uh, transistors, then the W and L will going to affect seriously. It will change the delta, uh, it will change the uh, threshold voltages. So you have to use this equation instead of the classical uh, equation to determine the threshold voltages. Now, uh, the substrate uh, doping going to be involved in the WD and the WD, is, by the way, is a depletion layer from the surface in the inversion layer, right? And then the bulk charge, bulk charges, so that it is going to affect both threshold voltage and threshold voltage change with respect to the geometries. And the uh, substrate voltage should be included in the uh, depletion, of course. And this is the plot that the theoretical value th curves of the threshold voltage is a function of a channel length for various junction depths. And then uh, as you decrease the uh, channel length, you can see the drop in the threshold voltages. All right? The RJ values have uh, uh, different RJ values here. And uh, you can see the uh, decrease with respect to the uh, miniaturization of the geometry. It's going to be uh, very sensitive to the RJ value. You have, obviously, you have to have a small RJ. Okay? If you have a large RJ, then uh, uh, threshold voltage will decrease very sharply with a decrease in the geometry, in the length. And this is a threshold, theoretical threshold voltage as a function of a channel length for various uh, substrate doping. Substrate doping also affects the uh, effect of geometry on the threshold voltages. And uh, from this uh, experimental results or theoretical values, you can see that you want to have a lightly doped substrate to, to begin with. If you have a heavy doping on your substrate, then your the transistor is more sensitive to the geometries in terms of the threshold voltages. So if you want to make a small transistors, then you have to use a lightly doped substrate instead of a heavily doped substrate. Otherwise, the, your threshold voltage is going to be very sensitive to the size of your transistors. Okay? This is the, another example, comparison of theory and experiment for the case that uh, the channel length is uh, 1.4 micron, 3.8 micron, and 7.4 microns. Uh, yeah. And it's all the same token, okay? The formulation presented so far provides a reasonable agreement with the experiment, as you can see in this figure. At least under some conditions, other uh, data brings into question the uh, one of our dependence. Also, as far, well, so far, no VDS dependence has been included. But we're going to include the drain uh, voltages of these equations in a minute, okay? It is not that complicated. All you have to do is, now the L, L is not going to be uh, broken into uh, three pieces, L3 and L2 and L4. Now here, the L3 and L4 will be different because you are applying the drain voltages, okay? So with the voltages, we are going to have a different value of L4, and we know how the L4, the length, depletion length, is going to be changed with the uh, application of the voltage on the drain. 
So it is not that difficult to uh, formulate the length. Okay. Now L2, we can uh, write the equation uh, corresponding to the L2. And uh, I think it, uh, the, the something. L2 is L minus L3 minus L4, right? So it should be something like this. Here, L2 means from here to here, okay? And L prime is the uh, other, the top of the trapezoid area. And then L3 and L4. So this L2 is uh, L minus L3 and uh, minus L4. And then L3 can be uh, shown uh, like this, and then L4 can be shown like this. So this is the equation for the L2, okay? And then in the calculation of the area of the, this trapezoid, is you have to uh, add this L2 to L prime, and then multiply with the uh, WD, the height, and by, divided by the half of it, that is the area. And then uh, that area is going to support the charges QB here to calculate the threshold voltages. And that's, this is what uh, has been done, just that, okay? We calculate the area of the trapezoid, and then we, in this equation is different from the former equation in the sense that it does include it contains the drain uh, voltages. So if you have a drain voltage zero in this equation, then this equation, of course, should uh, be equal to the former equations, all right? And if we assume in this expression, like uh, Vd as a drain voltage zero, then, of course, this equation is going to approach to uh, the uh, former equation. It should, right? And uh, this is the uh, plot, which says variation of threshold voltage with the channel length in short channel MOSFET for various substrate and the drain bias voltages, the parameters, uh, blah, 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 blah. and then you can see the threshold voltage and the channel length, and then you can see the zero, and uh, this is zero, is no drain voltages, and this is uh, uh, drain voltages equal to 10. Okay, as you can see, when you have a drain voltages, it more sharply decrease with the channel length of the threshold voltages. And uh, here's another experiment we just to saying variation of threshold voltage with the oxide thickness. Oxide thickness also affect the changes of geometric uh, influence on the threshold voltages and channel length and comparison with the numerical solutions. And uh, you can see the numerical solution, approximate solution is almost uh, identical, is not much difference. Especially when the channel length is large, we don't see any difference. But uh, as we decrease the channel length, you may see the difference in the numerical uh, solution. This is the computer solution and an approximate solution that uh, we, the, uh, the results that we have developed uh, in, the, in this class. You can see the uh, uh, difference. But even that difference becomes negligible when you go from here to here, where the, uh, the substrate bias is going to be changed, then even that difference is going to be decreased. All right?
it should be recognize that, that these models are applying about the potential at the silicon silicon oh, enough has been, okay uh, well uh, this is a drain uh, voltage induced barrier lowering but we just uh, skip that now <coughs> we have so far we have taken in we have uh, taken the length into account for the threshold voltage determination. Now, what about the width? Okay. Uh, if you want to think about the width, it becomes a little bit more complicated. But um, it can be visualized in this uh, figure uh, that the W is this from here to here is the length, but W is from here to here, okay? <coughs> that is the W. And how can you take that thing into account? It's a little bit hard to visualize. Uh, it, it's not a simple matter, but you can see that uh, you know, in this figure, it just have channel stop implantations in this field oxide uh, beneath the field oxide in, or the, for the uh, source and drains. Uh, this figure just a saying that um, when you have well, when you have uh, field oxide, something like this, this is the field oxide, okay, and then uh, uh, you're su supposed to put the uh, source and drains, something like this, this is source and drains, and then gate oxide and the gate. This is the, the transistor uh, configuration. Uh, in modern devices, when you, before you uh, do the uh, field, make a field oxide by locus process, okay, this is the, we have discussed about this locus process uh, in, the, in the beginning of this class. Before the locus process, what you do is you do the you have to make an implantation underneath this field oxide. Okay, you do the implantation, we call this a field implantation. Field ion implantation. And then you oxidize the surface to grow the field oxide. Then the, the final thing is going to ha uh, look. It's going to look like this, and uh, the reason why we implant the uh, P plus layers, for example, for the animals, is that the, uh, this uh, semi recessed, semi recessed, okay semi-recessed uh, field oxide will isolate, it will cut off the electrical communication between the transistors, or, uh, but uh, we want to uh, do the ion implantation to make a diodes to uh, isolate the transistors to prevent the communication between the uh, transistors. So. The integration means, okay, integration, integration means we have to electrically separate the transistors and then later we have to connect these transistors of, to make a, a circuit, right? Right? So for the separation, we have to use the field oxide, the physical separation, and then field implantation as well for the separation. So if you do this, 
Now, the width effect in the calculation of the width effect becomes a little bit more complicated because now if you look at uh, look the turn, uh, silica wafer on the top, what you are going to see is that, uh, let me see, actually you are going to see This is the active area, active, active area, and then this is a field oxide. Everywhere outside is the field oxide, okay? Because you have uh, this much about the surface. So everywhere is a field, uh, field oxide, and then uh, just at uh, 3,000 angstrom or so, uh, below we have, we're going to have an active area. And then in that, in this active area, what we are going to do is we're going to put a source here and a drain here. And then we, our gate is going to running through this, something like this. Okay, this is, this is going to be the gate. Okay. This is going to be the gate. Now, this is what we are going to see if you look uh, at the uh, integrated uh, transistors from the top of your wafer. Now, the length effect, we have discussed uh, this, this length. But if you want to uh, look into the width effect, then now you are going to have to think about the this dimensions, okay? And then underneath this field oxide, you have all implanted the field implantation has have, has been done on this uh, field oxide underneath the field oxide, so. What we have to calc we have we have uh, calculate here is uh, along this uh, section. What's going to happen on this uh, slope? Okay, that is going to be complicated. So it is uh, in the length effect. We don't have to uh, take this uh, complicated situation, uh, field implantation, and things like that into account. But in the width effect, now in the channel, the, the areas which supports the channel, uh, the bulk charges, involves this gray area, which has been, uh, which uh, includes the field implantation. So this figure uh, try to explain that, you know, in the width effect. In the width effect, you see the field implantation is going to see like this, and then uh, this is a, a cross section of that, and then uh, this gray area should be included in the uh, uh, in the channels that uh, which has to support the bulk charges. <coughs> More realistically. Channel stops implant. Channel stop implant is the field implantation. It would be used in a practical structure for the complicating, for the complication of the analysis that happens. Okay. Now, this is the length effect we have just seen like this. But in the width effect, now we are going to have a WD, which is the same to that. But here. We have alpha WD, and we have some uh, gray area underneath the field oxide, which has been, uh, which the ion implant, uh, field implantation has been done. And this alpha has to be determined uh, empirically. We cannot determine in the theory, because this alpha is related in everything, 
uh, ion implantation nanogears, field oxide decoders, and then the field oxidation time and temperature, all those things. So is, we cannot take all those uh, variables into account. We just simply determine the alpha values. And later you can see that the alpha is almost uh, 0 0.25. Uh, okay. Now, uh, it is uh, a little bit harder to visualize this, but you can see some prism. Can you see the prism here? Which is coming out on the surface of this board. Okay, that is uh, cont that contains the alpha uh, WD, and the height is uh, WD, and then we have this here, half of the prism. What do you, what do you have to say? It's just a kind of a prism, but it uh, coming uh, has a slope. In this section, it is a slope related to the alpha here. Okay, and then the charges inside this volume is going to be like that, and then the shape is rectangular on the top. The sides are triangular, and the slope inwards. And uh, the geometry, simple geometry calculation, is going to show you uh, something like this. Okay, the charges and the charge contained in the volume above can be shown something like this. That is a very simple, uh, simple mathematics or primary, primary school stuff, okay? So it is not, uh, it is difficult to visualize, but uh, once you visualize the uh, uh, situation, then it is not uh, difficult to calculate. Anyway, so the total charge is going to be a lateral and the W, uh, B, W thing. And then it can be uh, shown that the total charge is going to be equated to this uh, geometric uh, factors. Okay. So in this equation, you immediately see that as you decrease the length, the threshold voltage decreases, but if you decrease the width, the threshold voltage is going to increase from that equation. And WD increase, the threshold voltage is more sensitive to the geometric factors. And then RJ here again, RJ has to be uh, decreased to make the threshold voltage insensitive to the geometry. Okay, you need the shallow junctions. The parameter alpha is, li very, is likely very difficult to calculate since it depends on so many uh, parameters. So the alpha which determines the slope so that the uh, QBW And then it's uh, uh, experimentally determined, and it usually be in between. Uh, it's less than one, okay. And in this particular example, uh, the alpha is about the point two five. All right, this is a, a, a experimental thing. Okay. So we have uh, uh, many plots uh, showing the experimental results, but you can see the numerical calculation. Uh, all those things can be done by the numerical calculation, but uh, the analytical approach that we have done in this class is to make, uh, make us under, understood, understand the uh, uh, physics inside. So that probably it will help us, definitely it will help us uh, design uh, the uh, miniaturized transistors which is insensitive, less <coughs> sensitive to the geometry thing. Uh -huh. 
This is the summary of the result, effect of threshold voltages and then RJ, substrate temperatures, uh, back gate uh, bias voltages, length, th uh, thickness of the oxide, drain voltages, uh, and things like that. Okay, those parameters, it's going to affect the long gate, uh, short channel, narrow width, and uh, short gate uh, device. Yeah, here is a small geometry device and things like that. You know, it has uh, designations all here. It should be noted that the devices on the same chip with a different W and or L will have a different uh, threshold voltages. In a one chip, you are going to make uh, all different sizes of the transistors with the same process parameters which means, according to our equation, uh, according to our discussion, each transistor has a different, if they have a different geometry, then the threshold voltages is going to be different accordingly. So that, that is going to be a problem. You should not have a too, uh, too much different in the size in a one chip. Otherwise, you're going to have all uh, various values of threshold voltages. And you have to apply different voltages to turn on the transistors. <coughs> <coughs> Finally, note that in a modern oxide, <coughs> isolated high resistivity substrate structure will have the following. Here, the oxide isolated means we have a field oxide and locus process has been done. And then high resistivity substrate means we have to have a low doping of the substrate to make the transistor insensitive to the transistors in terms of the threshold voltages. So naturally, we have to have our oxide isolation and high resistivity substrate but we have to do something to, to, make a, uh, to control the threshold voltages. If you have a low doping of the substrate, then you have uh, uh, problems like uh, uh, punch-throughs and uh, body effects, all those things, which we are going to discuss about it later. So, this is the modern structure of the uh, uh, MS structure, modern, uh, modern structures. What you do is you have a tenosta implantation and then you have a low resistive, <coughs> low doping of the substrate, but you are going to do the channel implant. This is going to be called the channel stop implant. Here, we are going to do the channel implant, and this channel implant will control the threshold voltages of the device, okay? So, the reason why we have to have a low doping substrate is to make the transistor insensitive to geometry, according to our <coughs> uh, theories discussed in this class. But uh, we have to do the channel implant to compensate that. Okay, this is the uh, uh, modern amateur transistor structures. Uh, here is talking about the Burzbeck, and of course the Burzbeck is related to the slope alpha, okay, and the uh, width effect discussion. So the birds big again, not only the uh, area in terms of the area, but also the uh, threshold voltage sensitivity to the geometry, the birds big has to be controlled. This problem has not been analyzed except perhaps by using the, the full 2D uh, computer simulator. Simulators are available. Okay? We call that uh, noble 
2D simulators. Okay, uh, the next uh, sections will be discussed in the next Monday. Okay, we have uh, subset resistivity selection uh, section, and after that, we have to discuss about uh, N channel, P channel uh, choice. Uh, well, let me see. Yeah. We are here in this chapter five, electric characteristic of a micro sized MH devices. We have just a review to the MH threshold voltage calculation, which does not contain the geometric uh, uh, effects. And we just, uh, uh, geometric effect has been discussed in this class. And the next class on Monday, we're chapter, uh, section 5.3, 5.4, 5 5.5, 5 .5, all three sections will be discussed in the uh, next Monday. And uh, next week, Monday. And then uh, uh, on Wednesday, next week, we begin to talk about the electrical characteristics of uh, micron sized bipolar devices. All right? Okay, uh, have a nice weekend and I'll see you on um, next Monday.